Hi folks, welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Hi folks, welcome to Curtis Ghost Corner. From the Daily Mail, the Democratic brand has been tarnished. Yeah, no kidding, you think? DNC cherishes party needs to battle the damage that has been done to it by movements like defund the police to win over rural voters. You know, I am really critical of the Democrat Party. Uh, I live in upstate New York here locally, statewide, and in Washington, these mental pygmies are so self-unaware that it's staggering. It's staggering that these guys make this much money and can be this wrong. Let's read on. The head of the U.S. National Democratic Committee has admitted the party's brand has suffered damage, quotation marks, and argued that Democrats should be more Attractive to rural voters with better messaging. <laughs> to rural voters, are you insane? You call every single person that voted for Donald Trump a racist. You call everybody that doesn't agree with your back crap crazy racial uh, theories and ideologies and your diversity pushes. If they don't agree with them, they're racist and monsters and anti-American. White is bad. Woke, whiteness, white supremacy, uh, white is evil. Okay, we're going to have better messaging? How about, not call, let's start with not calling them names. I think that we have to do a, as a party, is battle the damage to the Democratic brand, DNC Chair Jamie Harrison, who ran against Senator Lindsey Graham in South Carolina last year. Yeah, that must be his consolation prize. He gets to be DNC Chair if Lindsey Graham had an opponent. He said on Daily's Beast, New Abnormal Podcast. Good name. That's a good name, though. New Abnormal. I've experienced my own, experienced my own race. Lindsay and his crew of dark money. Oh, yeah. All the, we found out now the hundreds of millions of dollars that were funneled through nonprofits to, to farm Democrat votes for Joe Biden out of major cities. That's not dark money. These guys got a, he's got a set of balls effectively labeled me as somebody who believed in defunding the police, he continued. Well, yeah, you did. My grandfather and my stepfather signed what is a Detroit police officer for 40 years, so I don't believe in that. My grandfather on my stepfather's side. So it's not even a blood relation, but still, it doesn't matter. It means nothing, so I don't believe that. But they were able to do it because the Democratic brand has been so tarnished in South Carolina that people would believe anything. No, you, they don't, you don't have to make up stuff. If they said Jamie kicked a puppy the other day, they would have believed it, the party chair said. It's not even just with Republicans. The Democrat brand with some of the folks who are core, are core at the base of our party is not the greatest. Yeah, because of that moron pictured right there. And it's not Biden and Harris, even though that's part of it. It's the idiot AOC. And so I want to spend a lot of time, energy, and effort understanding why the brand is where it is, where it is and how, and how can we, what can we do in order to improve it? You know, I think these people actually believe this crap. They're so self-unaware of how ridiculous their ideology and how ridiculous their governing style is and what they propose to do and what they are doing. You want to prove the Democratic brand? Go in the House of Representatives in the U.S. Senate and tell them to shut the F up and work for the American people instead of trying to gain control and power for the next two generations. Harris said the Democrats are fighting for policies that would benefit voters in rural areas and lamented that the party hasn't been able to make these voters realize what's best for them. Oh, I see. You don't know. See, that's typical. Typical progressive leftist BS. You don't know what's best for you, but we do. And that is their problem. 
we have to take credit and claim the things that we have have gotten done over the course of the next two this next two years. We're going to do a lot for rural America. The American Rescue Plan has so much in there for rural communities across this country. It'll have a huge benefit. This infrastructure plan, when we get this done, the broadband component alone will totally transform rural America. Oh, because they can get better internet access? Are you, are, are you really that stupid? You don't think these farms have satellites and, and hookups? That, that the colleges and the high schools and the junior high schools and elementary schools in rural areas don't have internet? What do you think? They have dirt floors and they walk around barefoot? I, I, I mean, these people are nuts. It's one of several self-assessing le- assessments leveled by Democrats in the wake of the 2020 election, which saw the party retake the White House and the Senate, even as their major- majority shrink in the House. They didn't shrink. They got clobbered. Soon after the election, commenter Bill Maher, a self-identified liberal, accused Democrats of hypersensitive woke BS that cost them ground in the House. Because just they destroyed themselves. As like I said in a previous episode considering social media. They destroyed themselves in the house in the uh, house because of the fact they did everything nasty and ridiculous and way over the line to get Donald Trump out. And after they shot themselves continuously in the foot, poked themselves in the eye continuously, they barely beat him. And you know so much about making people aware of racism, their share of minority votes went down, he continued. That's right, because your message is BS. Absolute BS. Absolutely ridiculous. I can't even tell you how crazy it is. So I don't want to get going on here, but the message Democrats from so much of the country seems to be we don't like Trump, but we still can't bring ourselves to vote for you. That's partially true. I'll give them that. A lot of people like didn't like Trump. Even though I'm a huge Trump fan, still am. While prominent left-wing members such as AOC have galvanized a Democrat base. Yeah, the base that represents 12% of the American population, you idiot. They have also provided fodder for the party's critics who accuse the Democrats of swinging too far left. What do you mean accuse? They did. It's like saying, I live in upstate New York. Uh, I'm going to predict that this coming winter it's going to be cold. You know, it just these guys are so they're so off the hook. Though Casio Cortez frequently makes headlines, a recent nonpartisan study ranked her as one of the least effective Democrats in Congress. I gotta, I gotta do that. Uh, EOC introduced 21 substantial bills to Congress. Her legislation failed to progress any farther. According to the Center for Effective Lawmaking, a joint project between Vanderbilt University and the University of Virginia, ultra lefties. And they even said she's worthless. None of the legislation received attention the committee's floor votes, nor did any become law, according to the data collected from Congress.gov. Kaiser Cortez ranked 230th out of 240 Democrats across the country and was dead last among the 19 that are in New York, in New York State. We got to give another one. <laughs> Jesus, who the hell are the other 10? <laughs> they really got to suck. <laughs> It's, I, you know, are they just doing this for the interview? Are they so self unaware that what they say and what they do is so disconnected from the vast majority of the American people? They didn't vote for Joe Biden. Many people voted against Donald Trump. Which was really weird because I'll tell you the truth, I was so... Happy one that Trump won when he won. But number two is when the Democrats took over the House in Trump's third year, I thought to myself, okay, here we have an opposing party running the House of Representatives. We have the Republicans running the Senate and the Republicans in the White House. Okay, you have to sit down with the Democrats in the House and get things done. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, my God, what do we have here? We have... Literally, the world's biggest deal maker. And what do these morons do in the House? Nothing. Impeached them twice. It's all kinds of crazy stuff. Russian collusion and, and you know, 
prostitutes in Moscow and, you know, uh, it was news for like three days on CNN that he got two scoops of ice cream instead of one and uh, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. Like he started with the neo-Nazis at Charlottesville and he hates brown people and black people and the attacks were constant. And anybody that even showed any, any leaning towards voting for Donald Trump was condemned as a monster and a racist and a homophobe and xenophobe and every other phobe you could possibly think of. And the media pounded relentlessly and so did social media. Then this guy says, well, I wonder why our brand's a little tarnished. Are you effing kidding me? I live in New York State. I don't, I don't live in New York City, not even close. Those of you who are not familiar with New York, I'm way upstate in Binghamton. Might as well be on Mars compared to New York City, where this mental pygmy is from. This is the same genius I saw in an NPR interview once when the unemployment rate in 2000, it was either 18 or 19, was the lowest for black and Latino Americans in U.S. history. And this genius turned to the interviewer and said, the reason why it's so low is because some people have two and three jobs. And the interviewer looked at her like, what? You know, you can read somebody's expression on their face. So she asked it again, figuring she misspoke. And then she doubled down. That's who we have running this country. And that's who represents a whole bunch of people in Queens. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. Then I heard this mental pygmy here sent, wired a bunch of money to a whole lot of Democrats running for Congress that are in swing districts, purple, whatever you want to call them. They're, they're close in 50-50 as far as Republican Democrat goes. Without telling these people the money was coming, so they couldn't say no. This woman is so stupid, instead of embarrassing the Democrats that are there in swing districts, instead of giving the money to the uh, DCCC, the Democrats, and the Democrats can in turn give it to those, she just sent it to them without asking. Some returned it, but it's too late. They're going to show up on election, federal election lists that she, her campaign sent that money to them. These people are nuts. What do you need to improve the party, sir? Going back to what you used to believe in, blue-collar workers, the working person, Americans, citizens. Instead of promoting like she did, and it's been been doing, it's been done in San Diego. You can't go get go to school at all in San Diego and California. But the unlawful minors that cross the border are getting one-on-one -on -one tutoring in San Diego, while citizens of San Diego and taxpayers there can't even go to school in a regular class. This is why you're disconnected. This is why you will fail again. So I make fun of this guy and these people being so self-unaware of their idiocy. And at the same time, I'm happy as hell. Because if they haven't caught on yet, they're never going to. They think the world is flat. And they're in for a rude awakening. The only thing that I hope and I pray for in a year and eight months when these people are destroyed in Congress... And hopefully in the Senate as well, that they realize the damage they've done to this country. And I hope this damage is not permanent and it can be fixed. We'll see. We're at war. Put your helmet on and, and get started. Don't lay down to these people. Start the local level. All you conservative people and Republicans, get a hold of your local parties so you can help local candidates at the local, state, and federal level. Now's the time to suit up. Just like when war starts, the draft starts. We need an army. Get in there and help. And until next time, folks, goodbye and good luck.